Welcome back to Exchange Server 2016 Infrastructure. In this module, we're going to talk about public folders. Now, contrary to popular belief, uh, public folders are not gone in exchange. It still exists. It's alive and well. And I uh, can hear the collective sigh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's funny. Public folders is one of those things that people either hate or they love. Yes. I've never met anybody that's on the fence about public folders. In many organizations, especially in the good old days of Exchange 2003 and so on, um, people created public folders and sometimes they just gave people carte blanche to create as many public folders as they wanted and it grew out of control. And so a lot of administrators, when you say the word public folder, started to cringe and they started to cry when you mentioned that because it was unmanageable, it just grew and uh, it was difficult to back up and so on. So uh, public folders really got a bad rap over the years. But then there's a lot of organizations that had finite control over it. They, they basically said only certain people will be able to create public folders and they managed it well and they use it for applications that worked well for public folders. And uh, so there was a time where not much happened to public folders in terms of innovation. And in Exchange 2013, we decided to make public folders a first-rate citizen in exchange and make it available for people to use and have a good availability story around it. So in this module, we're going to simply just look at how do we plan and implement public folders in Exchange Server 2016. So public folders in Exchange Server 2016 is very similar to the innovation that went into Exchange 2013. And the innovation that happened in Exchange 2013 is a, the concept of a dedicated database that stores public folders was abandoned. And they said, well, we're going to create public folders now inside of public folder mailboxes. And when a public folder mailbox is created, you assign it a mailbox database. And when you assign it a mailbox database, that public folder will be protected by the availability that you've set up for that database. Because you can set up a database availability group, replicate that database from one server to another server, or even to another server in another location. So you have a good story around public folder availability now. This was kind of tricky to do in the previous version because many public folders that was replicated in your organization was in different locations and somebody could make a change in one location and exactly at the same time do a change in another location and then those changes have to be replicated somewhere in the future and that creates sort of a dilemma for exchange to decide which one is now the authoritative one. So we have this problem with a multi-master model where things can change in multiple places and then we have to merge those changes, which can be complex to do. Uh, so with public folders now in mailboxes, the mailboxes themselves are replicated to the other databases and people will always write to one copy of those um, public folders and you would not have the problem of merging changes in the future. So that is why we've incorporated public folders inside of database availability groups as uh, mailbox uh, or public folder uh, mailbox. Uh, when we do this, it helps us to also um, sort out the issues around uh, how this replication works. Previously, uh, people had um, issues around um, the public folder hierarchy. The public folder hierarchy, uh, somebody could create a public folder with the same name in another location and now you have a conflict because it's two different public folders but they have the same name in the same hierarchy. Um, now, with the public folder mailboxes, you only have one primary hierarchy and that is replicated to all the other public folder mailboxes in the organization, but those are only secondary. Um, so the primary one is very important. You need to make sure that that one is always available for people to connect to. So uh, 
when you create this and somebody wants to create a new public folder, it will then talk to the primary mailbox hierarchy to see, you know, is this name already there? Can I create it? And it will create it and allow it to happen. It wouldn't talk to any of the other secondary um, public folder hierarchy uh, places because it, those are read only. The, only the primary one is uh, a writable copy. So if we have this concept in place of public folders, it allows us to uh, better manage the availability of the public folders. Some things that you need to consider as well is like how many public folders can you have in a public folder mailbox. So you want to limit that so that it's not too large. You want to make sure that there's, there's uh, because all of that data is in st stored inside of a mailbox itself, a public folder mailbox, which is basically a mailbox, and that's replicated to the other databases. So if that is big, then you know, you're going to have a huge impact on your database. So you have to think about who you're going to allow to create public folders and how many are can, can they create in, in your system. If you need more, then it's better to create a new public folder mailbox, which people then can create public folders in. Isn't that one of the things that's changed in Exchange 2016 is the, the number of public folder mailboxes you can create? Yep. Yeah, so now you can create uh, uh, much more public folders inside of your organization so that it is, um, it, 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 uh, you know, the, this is one of the issues previously when you migrated from Exchange 2010 and to 2013, uh, there was limits on the number of public folders. And so there were some organizations that wanted to use this new public folder mechanism that couldn't because they had so many public folders. And um, we accommodate most of those organizations now. The details are in the edX course. So if you want to know more about the details, then I would refer you to the edX course. That would be the edX course for mailbox databases? Uh, or for, for infrastructure. For this one? Yes. Okay, good. So um, I just want to quickly show you um, some of the options that is available in a demo for uh, managing public folders inside of your organization. So, uh, yeah, I'm inside of my exchange organization and we have a dedicated tab here for uh, public folders. And in public folders, uh, you have your public folders. I've already created a public folder and you have public folder mailboxes. If you don't have any public folders, so the first time that you create uh, public folders, you have to come and cre create a public folder mailbox inside of your exchange system so that you will be able to create public folders. So if you do that, I'll just click here on the plus. Um, you have to give this public folder a name. Uh, it, you have to specify a location where this, uh, because it's a mailbox, there's a user associated with it, special user. And you also specify a database, uh, which database this um, will be created in. So once it's created that, you have uh, another public folder database. And you see here that it's the first one was assigned the primary hierarchy. And any subsequent uh, mailboxes that you create is a secondary hierarchy. The hierarchy is also an interesting concept because the hierarchy is really only just a special public folder that contains a list of all the public folders. So every time you create a public folder, in your exchange server, it goes and modifies this first public folder that was created in the public folder mailbox and tells it there's another public folder in the overall hierarchy and it, you know, it shows you where it sort of the parent of that public folder is. So that is the hierarchy. Once we have the hierarchy, we can create new public folders. And so um, I create that one already that's uh, PF Docs, or, or sorry, IT Docs, and I'm, I can create another one here to say um, Finance Docs. So now I have two public folders inside of my organization. One is in uh, Finance uh, Docs and the other one is PF Docs. And I can mail enable this public folder, um, just like you would mail enable public folders in the old days where you want people to be able to send 
an email message to this public folder. You can still do that. You can mail enable that public folder and it will get an email address. And it's, it's almost similar to a shared mailbox, but it's just a public folder. From a user point of view, it is exactly the same as people are used to in Outlook. They will still see public folders as part of their list of folders in Outlook, and they can still uh, move and drag and drop items into that, and they can also still just post things in there. Uh, in Outlook on the web, it's a little bit different. You don't see it by default. You have to add a public folder as a favorite folder before you will see it. So your public folders is um, not you shown won't, by You won't default. see the hierarchy. Yeah, you like, won't see the whole hierarchy. Right. Uh, if you work with particular public folders and uh, you want to make them favorites, and then they will show up as your list of favorite folders inside of Outlook on the web. But other than that, uh, users will still manage and look at public folders the same way. So from a user point of view, it, it doesn't differ at all. You have to be uh, sort of uh, careful when you do a migration. So if you're running Exchange 2010 and you're still using old public folder databases and you want to migrate that data to Exchange 2016, uh, there's a process that you need to follow. And to uh, you can't move any users that is, oh, you have to actually move all your users first to Exchange 2016 because a user that is in Exchange uh, 2010 will not be able to access a public folder in Exchange 2016. But a user that is in Exchange 2016 will be able to access all 2010 public folders. So the process is simple. You have to move all your users first once you've moved all your users, uh, then you start your public folder migration. And then at one point, you point all the users to uh, public folders on Exchange 2016. And then you would live in the new happy land of public folders <laughs> on Exchange 2016. So um, this is really simple concepts and, and um, good for people to know that public folders are not gone. You know, that's still there if you're an organization that relies on public folders then you can use Exchange uh, 2016 to host your public folders. So that brings us to the end of this module on public folders. And we want to uh, remind you to come back and watch our uh, folder, on, our presentation on Exchange admin permissions and audit locking. Thank you.